Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Today, impacts of everything from the winter storm in the U.S. and the protests in France to even screen time on kids' brains. Plus, Google's CEO is in the hot seat and Time's Person of the Year. Those stories and many more in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Tuesday, December 11th. You ready? Let's do this. The snow may have stopped falling, but the winter storm in the southeast is still having a big impact. CBS News reports today the newest concern is black ice, since every southern state affected from Alabama to North Carolina is now dealing with freezing temperatures. And already people lost power. CNN says thousands still don't have the power back on today. The winter storm has also caused hundreds of flights to be canceled and hundreds of accidents on the streets. Some drivers were stranded for hours yesterday. And the Weather Channel says the storm is blamed for at least three deaths. Records have also been broken. Richmond, Virginia, for example, got more than 11 inches of snow, the most it's seen in more than a century. President Trump is defending himself more now in those legal issues we talked about yesterday. President Trump tweeted that the payments in 2016 to women who alleged affairs were, quote, a simple private transaction. He said it was not a campaign contribution. It wasn't a crime. And he said even if it was, it would be a civil offense, not a criminal one. But remember, prosecutors seem to disagree. Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, pleaded guilty to several crimes, including violating campaign finance laws for those payments. Prosecutors also referred to President Trump in a court filing, saying he was the one who told Cohen to do it. At this point, no charges have been filed against the president. France's president is promising protesters that he hears them and is making changes. Remember, there's been violent protests in Paris for four weekends in a row now. So yesterday, President Emmanuel Macron told the nation the minimum wage will increase and tax cuts are coming. Critics say it's too little too late. And in the UK, another crisis of sorts. Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May realized she could not get the votes for her Brexit deal, so she delayed today's planned Parliament vote altogether. So now the timeline for Britain's divorce from the European Union is in question. Stay tuned. There's a new report out about that Equifax data breach just more than a year ago, and it's not great. The House Oversight Committee now says, yes, the whole thing could have been prevented. That is, if Equifax had systems that were up to date. TechCrunch says the report found simple security measures could have stopped the hack, but the company failed. Equifax got defensive in a statement, though, saying the company was not given enough time to respond to this report. And some lawmakers criticized the report as well, saying those in charge did not lay out enough next steps on how to prevent these types of hacks in the future. Remember, Equifax is one of the world's largest credit rating agencies, and last year's data breach was one of the largest in U.S. history. 148 million people were impacted. Say goodbye to Google Plus four months earlier than expected. Why? A second software bug, and this one may have exposed 52 million people's private profile data. Google says there's no evidence anyone misused that data, though. There was a similar bug back in October that we talked about. After that one, the plan was to get rid of Google Plus in August 2019. Well, now it'll be taken down even earlier in April. Oh, and it probably does not help that this is all happening the week Google's CEO will be in the hot seat on Capitol Hill today. Fast Company reports lawmakers will be questioning CEO Sundar Pichai about everything, from whether there's political bias to user privacy and even plans to work with China's government to provide a censored search engine. In a statement so far, Pichai says he leads the company with no political bias, and he highlighted Google's impact on the U.S. economy, employing thousands and paying partners billions of dollars. All right, we have some stories still ahead, but just a quick break to thank this week's sponsor, The Neat Company. Neat streamlines your accounting and tax-related workflows so you can save up to 12 hours a week. And there's really no better time to start a new system to improve your workflows and your productivity than right now as we prep for a new year. This is especially for you if you feel like you're wasting a lot of time or even money keeping track of all your expenses each month, whether it's for your business or your side hustle, or maybe you just want to better organize your finances in the new year and keep track of everything. Neat lets you capture your expenses in several ways to make it easy, and you can just use your smartphone. So, for example, you can just take a picture of a gas receipt. Then the Neat system uses technology to read information off the documents you upload, to put them in the database in the cloud with bank-level security, and make sure they're searchable for later. 
So go ahead and try it out because the Neat Company is offering a free 30-day trial at neat.com slash newsworthy. Again, to take advantage of a 30-day free trial, go to N-E-A-T, neat.com slash newsworthy. Now back to the news. A NASA spacecraft found evidence of water on an asteroid in space. There isn't actually water on it right now, but NASA says there are signs that at some point there was water. And it's what scientists did expect. Space.com says scientists want to better understand the solar system's early days and what role asteroids like that one had in delivering water to Earth. So how much is too much screen time for kids? There may not be a definite answer yet, but there is a big study looking at it. CBS's 60 Minutes featured the study by the National Institutes of Health. And so far, the early results show a lot of screen time was associated with lower scores on some thinking and language tests. But, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean the screen time caused it. Researchers say they hope to figure that out, though, in the years to come. Because this study isn't over. Scientists across the country are following more than 11,000 children for a decade to study the effects of smartphones and so many screens. All right, today we will learn Time's Person of the Year, which Time magazine says is the person or people who most affected the news and our lives, whether it was in a good or bad way. The short list of candidates so far includes several political figures, so everyone from President Trump and a couple other world leaders to groups of people like the March for Our Lives activists and separated families at the border. Others on the list, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, and several more. Last year, it was the Silence Breakers representing the Me Too movement, and the year before that, it was President Trump. Time's pick for the Person of the Year in 2018 will be announced today. So what about the 2018 Sports Person of the Year? Sports Illustrated did name the winner as NBA champs, the Golden State Warriors. Yes, the entire team. The editors wrote sports, quote, gifted us a team so sublime that it is impossible to separate any one or two individuals from the rest of the group. The team will be honored at an awards ceremony today. It'll then air on TV on Thursday. So it is the end of the year, so there are a lot of these. I have one more to tell you about. The 2018 CNN Hero of the Year, who, by the way, will get $100,000 to keep doing this amazing work. It goes to Dr. Ricardo Punchong. He got the honor for his efforts providing free housing, meals, and support for sick children and their families who need medical treatment. Online voters chose the winner out of the top 10 finalists who all get $10,000 to keep making the world better. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you want to read more about the stories we talked about, just check out today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com. Go to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. The Newsworthy is ready for you every weekday by 4 in the morning. I will be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day.